Hello and welcome to Food Tech 101. Now, today I've got the most random selection of vegetables you're ever going to believe. These are the unwanted. These are the things that I get left in the fridge and you always promise to make something with them. But time goes by, they kind of shrivel a little bit, but they're not shriveled, but not quite dead. So I am thinking, what can I do with this completely random selection of vegetables? Think I'm kidding? Let me show you. So here we go. We've got a bit of cabbage. We've got some parsnips that I've definitely seen better days. We've got some, uh, some peppers, which look pretty good. We've got uh, an aubergine and we've got some mushrooms and we've got half a can of baked beans. What on earth? I mean, it's even got radish. And this, 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 is, this is going a bit too far. That's going to go in a bin. What on earth can we make that's halfway tasty with such a random selection of vegetables? Well, <laughs> we shall see. Today I'm going to turn this random selection of vegetables into a roast vegetable stromboli. We have some aubergine over there that's chopped up. We have some sweet pepper. We have one onion. We have some cabbage. We have our parsnips and our mushrooms. They look kind of random all together, like they'll never go together, and maybe they won't, but we shall see. I've got a nice plan for them. So next step, I'm gonna season them. Okay, so I've preheated the oil in the pan, and it's pretty hot. Just gives us a good base, nice and hot to get our vegetables in. Gonna give them a bit of a stir, just to kind of get them a little bit coated in some of the oil. It's important that we, they're fully coated in the oil. That's gonna help them in their roasting. Okay, so our veggies in, and already, with all the assortment of colors and shapes, you can see it's gonna be nice, can't you, really? So for my random bunch of vegetables that maybe some people might have been because they've been in there a while, we've got, we've got a, an array of color. Now we need to add seasoning. Now you can add whatever you want, but this is my special seasoning mix that gives it kind of a, a chickeny flavor. A good thing to have in the kitchen flavor all around is um, yeast flakes, tremendous. So I'm gonna sprinkle some yeast flakes on to begin with. About a quarter of a cup in total. Next, a bit of garlic. quite an intense flavour really for, for the centre of our stromboli. Next, another really great ingredient, onion granules. I'm going to add a little bit of mixed herbs. To help with the caramelisation, I'm going to add a little bit of brown sugar. Finally, I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper. So pepper first, because I haven't cut it in my hand. Oh, get a cap off, that would be helpful. A little bit of salt, rather pepper. It's the wrong way around, isn't it? And some salt. And then what we have to do is give this a really good, thorough mix. And there we have it. Our vegetables have been seasoned. A little bit of oil on them already. You can smell this. They're not even baked yet and they smell incredible. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roast these off in the oven for about 30 minutes. I've got it on quite a high heat, so I'm looking at well, a little bit of charring because I want that slightly charred flavor on it. So I'm gonna put it on a high heat, about 250, and I'm gonna watch it a little bit, maybe give it 15, 20 minutes. If it starts to burn, maybe just give it a little bit of rotation, turn the heat down slightly. But I do want a little bit of charring on it because I want that kind of roasted, slightly charred flavor. Okay, so while my vegetables are roasting off in the oven, I have my half a can of baked beans. Now, a stromboli is basically sort of like a pizza that you, you put the, the base on the pizza and then instead of just baking it open, you sort of roll it up. So you end up with a spiral of, uh, of pizza filling wrapped around inside of a completely baked loaf. I mean, it'll, it'll make more sense when I do it. So we need a tomato sauce. Now to get our tomato sauce, I'm gonna use up 
the half a can of baked beans that I had in the fridge. It's all good. It's all good. If ever you're short and you want to make a, a quick tomato sauce and you don't have any passata or anything like that, baked beans are a pretty good uh, alternative. So I've got some baked beans. I've got a um, quarter of a carton of passata. Next, I'm going to add a little bit of tomato puree and a rich tomato flavour. About two spoonfuls. I've got a little bit of sweet chilli, want a little bit of a kick. I'm going to put a little touch of sweet chilli in there. Finally, a little bit of soy sauce. Okay, so I've put all my ingredients in and what I'm going to do, you could leave it as this, nice and a bit chunky, but I want to, I want to blend this, so I want to have a smooth base, to tomato base, so I'm going to blend our, our beans and passata and stuff mix, so here we go. Okay, so blend it now, let's have a little taste. Nice, smooth consistency. Oh, that is delicious. That's perfect. So, you get a little bit of the baked bean flavour, but it's nicely integrated. Now, there's one ingredient that I forgot to add, and that is some liquid smoke. I want it to have a really kind of smoky flavour, so I've got some liquid smoke by a company called Special Ingredients to do some really interesting flavouring. So, they let me have a few samples. I'm going to put a couple of squirts of this. So I'm just going to fully mix that in. Right, let's assemble. Okay, all our separate components are done now. Now all we need to do is assemble. So I'll start off, just put a little bit of flour down. Just make sure our dough will stick. Let's go. So here I have the dough I made previously, which is just left proving, from proving for a couple of hours. I'm using a wholemeal flour. It's not really a bread flour, so it's not particularly high in protein. But to be honest with you, in these times, I went to the supermarket the other day to, to, to get some flour, and there's none there. There's literally no flour in the entire store. So with, at these times, just use whatever flour you have. The truth of the matter is, some flours are better than others for sure, but not so much that they make a massive, massive difference. So just use whatever flour you have. So I'm using wholemeal flour, because that's what I had. I think it's ch wholemeal chapati flour. Not the best for bread, but it still makes a decent bread. So what I'm doing now, I'm just rolling out the dough. Now the difference between this and a high protein flour is that you can see it doesn't have the same stretchability, stretchiness as say a high protein flour would. So it's more inclined, as you can see there, to break apart. Whereas a high protein protein flour would would be more inclined to stretch. Now we don't want it to we don't want it too thin because it's got to hold quite a decent bit of filling. Right. We have our base. Now let's get our sauce on. So here's our base that we made before. Now I know when you saw the baked beans you thought Sir's lost his mind, but no he hasn't. Now, I'm going to try and leave an edge around, especially at this end, because a stromboli is like I said a rolled up pizza and it needs somewhere to roll back onto. So I'm going to start this end, so this end can be have quite a bit of sauce on it, but then I'm going to roll it up and finish it at that end. So I need to make sure at least some space. All right, we've got our base down. Now for our lovely, amazing roast vegetables. I mean, just look at that. If you could smell these. From that random bunch of vegetables that are in our fridge that didn't look like they could make anything, if you could even just smell these, you'd eat, you could eat this literally as it is, or stuff it inside a kebab or anything. It, it's that full of flavor. But here we go. So this is gonna be the filling for our stromboli. I'm just gonna space it out. Carve it too thick, otherwise it won't roll up. If I might roll up anyway, I might, have, I might have made too much filling, but we'll see. Right, so I'm just going to space out our filling. Oh, this is wow! This looks nice. A 
are just thinking maybe I put too much filling in. Have I got, have I got a little bit too greedy with the filling? Right, we'll see. So a regular pizza would be just base, vegetables, bit of cheese, bang in the oven. A stromboli, we roll it up. Now it can be a little bit of a delicate operation. Sometimes because of the filling it can fall apart, but, and this isn't bread flour. So because it's not bread flour, it's more inclined, it's inclined not to stretch as much, but here we go. We're doing it, we're doing it. We're doing it, 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 we're doing it. And we've done it, more or less. I'm just gonna pinch the ends together. Filling's bursting out the edge. That's okay, don't mind a little bit of filling coming out the edge. So we've got, roughly speaking, our shape. Now I've got to try and get that shape onto the tray without it falling apart. Now, I've just got an idea. I was gonna pick it up but then I realized maybe I could roll it. Maybe I could, maybe I can, maybe I can, maybe I can't. I don't know. It's pretty full. Can it roll? Ooh! Yeah, we've rolled it. So because we've rolled it now, we should be able to pick it up and place it in. Ooh, it's a whopper. Now when it's baking, I imagine some stuff's gonna come out the sides, but it's a whopper. But it's all in. I thought it'd fall apart. It might burst out a couple of places, but that's okay. Right, next thing is, as quick as I can, get it in the oven. I'm gonna put some boiling water in the oven to get some steam, because I want quite a nice crust on this particular stromboli. So I'm gonna boil some water, bowl, boil some water even, get it in the oven, create some steam, Whack it in, I'm gonna bake it for about 40 minutes. Woo! Look at that. Big fat thing. Big papa. Our giant, nice and crispy on the outside. Our giant stromboli. So, ooh. I'm just gonna turn it around so you can see some of the, some of the vegetables that are sort of oozing out of the side. It smells amazing. I'm going to lift it up so you can see a little bit closer to the You can see all that part down at the bottom. Now it's piping hot, so unlike certain breads, like you want to eat out of the oven, this will burn you senseless if you eat it out of the oven because not only is it the bread, but you've got all the vegetables inside that would retain more heat than the bread. So we're going to have to leave this now for a good while before we can take it out and cut it until we're dealing with it. So, but so far, so absolutely delicious. And we're back. So, it's cooled a little bit, but it's not cold. And now the beauty of this thing, when you look at it from the outside, they never look like anything from the outside, really. The beauty really should be what it looks like when it's cut. So let's cut it and get an idea exactly what we're dealing with. Nice, crunchy outside. Look at that. Look at that. And that's what you get on the inside. This thing is all about the beauty of the inside. So at first I thought maybe I'd overfilled it, but I think I filled it just about right. Now what you can also do with these things is add cheese. Now I didn't actually have any cheese. I would have loved some, some vegan cheese to go inside this, but I didn't have any. So cheese is another, so you can get the cheese oozing out. That's another great thing. So I'm gonna go ahead cut a few slices and present it on a plate. And there we go, and we're back. And here we have our stromboli. Now stromboli never looks great from the outside. It looks like a big mound, a big sort of bread monster in particular shape, but once you cut it, and you can see the spiral shape inside, and you can smell it. This is all our seasoned, smoky, roasted vegetables. But let's see what it tastes like. I'm gonna taste it. This is actually my dinner now as well, so I'm actually gonna eat a bit. Mm. It tastes like a, 
you've got all the pizza flavors, so your brain's almost like I'm eating pizza. Mm. A bit more grown up. I think what I like about this in particular is that you can actually taste the flavor of the different vegetables you've used. They're roasted, they're seasoned, it's the sweetness of the parsnip. Taste again. Mm. There's a little bit of mushroom, the sweet peppers. So the good thing about this, is that you don't lose any of the flavors of the individual vegetables. So you can taste all the different vegetables. We've all got um, an overall seasoning a smoky feeling and a smoky flavour in common we can still taste the individual vegetables so you are still being able to taste all different things it's really really nice what's amazing is that we have these completely random forgotten in some cases what they're going in the bin type vegetables a little bit of loving here a few seasonings we've got ourselves a really tasty dish now if i was doing this again and if i had the ingredients i would definitely add cheese this, this thing is begging for a bit of cheese didn't have any. But if you've got some cheese, cheese makes it for me. A little bit of tanginess, a little tight sourness. I would definitely have cheese on this, but I just didn't have any in the fridge and I forgot to get some when I went shopping today. But that was the only thing that I would use to improve this. A bit of a nice bit of cheese spiraling through there. But I think overall, considering the vegetables that we started off with, I think that's a darn good result. Once again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Food Tech 101 is on Facebook. We have a video page on Facebook, very similar to YouTube. So check us out there and, and follow us there. And we also try and post things on Instagram on a fairly regular basis. So follow us there too. As always, my name is Mr. Lieber. For you, because we're friends, you can call me sir. Of things we know.